Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of Technology Talk. My name is H.J. Dunmore and I'm your host. As always with Technology Talk, we take a look at various technology and we take a look at it through the eyes of you, the consumer. Is it something that's going to be advantage to you if you were to purchase it? And basically, what are the pros and cons? And I'm giving that from my opinion. And, you know, at the same time, I speak to people in the industry and friends of mine and folks that I work with to get their opinion as well. So it will be a good choice for you if you decided to purchase or not, and we'll let you know that. And we love to discuss technology as always. We love to talk, and we like to talk about the logic behind it. How does the technology work, and how does it affect you? The Panasonic HMC40 camera is a great camera for a person that's looking to get involved with videography um, more on a professional or professional level. And it's like more of like, I would call it a gateway camera. It gets you in towards that next level. This camera records in the AVC HD format. Now an example I can think about is a shot of me right here. Imagine there's a house on my left and then there's going to be on my right hand side there's going to be a stop sign for example. Well I'm talking, my face is moving so the camera or the computer inside the camera needs to process the information of me moving left and right. But we know that what's on my left and on my right hand side is not going to be moving at all. So the camera takes an internal snapshot or just records to its own memory what's on my left and my right side and it's only going to process the information that is changing which of course is going to be my hands, my face, my eye blinking, so on and so forth. So, but this ABC HD format, it compresses it and what it does is only takes information that's necessary. As a video editor, I found with Adobe Premiere works with AVC HD natively. I can take the card and import it into my computer and I can begin editing almost immediately. Now if you have something that's going to be a lot of cuts, a lot of action going on, then I probably would suggest to go ahead and compress it or go ahead and transfer, transcode it to whatever format you need to work with. But if it's something where you're recording an event and you see to place some titles, some lower thirds on it and they go ahead and export it back out, then I definitely suggest you go to Adobe Premiere. Okay, let's take a look at the camera. We'll start off at the left side. Now on the front you have your focus assist and your zoom or focus. Now you can take, just like with the, um, with the JVC camera, you can decide to either use this knob, this ring here to focus, or you can switch it to your zoom mode and you can go ahead and zoom in and out. Let's say if I'm focusing on a picture and I'm if I'm doing a shot, well, I may look at it one way and say, that shot is in focus, it looks pretty good. Other person may say, yeah, I think it is, but you may want to tweak it just a little bit. Well, the focus assist will pretty much seal the deal, lets us know what's going on. And what will happen is it will zoom it in to a very, very sharp point in the picture, zooming the picture in, with, once again, without affecting the, what you're recording. And it allows you to fine tune the details of your shot so that you, you and the person as well with you will be able to say, this is definitely right in focus, let's continue with what we're doing. And with most cameras, the focus assist, you can't adjust it while you're recording. With this model, you can, so that is a major plus, especially in situations where you wanna make sure that, that you're continually recording, you don't wanna stop, especially if you have two or three cameras that you're working with. Sync is gonna be very important. One thing I like about it is your iris is on the side here. Of course, when a, in a professional manual camera, manual lens, you're going to have your iris, your focus, all that right in the front. But right here, you have it in that same general area, so that works out really well. You have the option of pressing the button in to go with automatic mode, or you can actually dial manual automatic. Now, this is a plus because in most cameras, you can only increase the amount of light that's coming into the camera by steps. So every time you press it up, it'll allow more and more and more in. But with this dial, I can gradually let more light in, or I can close it and decrease the amount of light that's coming into the camera. And I think that is a major plus. Now, as we open up the camera itself, you see the viewfinder. And I am not a fan of touch screens. I don't like touch screens because it, first of all, when I touch the camera, many times, depending upon how many menus I'm trying to navigate to, it's going to result in shakiness of the camera. And that's something I'd like to do without. So that's one thing I don't like about it. But what I do like about the, the camera is that in one area, you can find just about everything that you need. Your battery is going to give you about three hours of video recording. Now, of course, as a videographer, one thing you need to know is that if you're not monitoring something that continual action and you know you're recording somebody at a podium, close your viewfinder. That's going to save a lot of battery time. Very conveniently, you have your features that are in the back of the back of the camera, and it actually is labeled for each compartment. So you have your AV out, your component out, your headphones, or your camera remote. This does have LAN control, ladies and gentlemen, so I'm very happy about that. And on your left side, then you have your HDMI out if you want to go ahead and connect it to an HD monitor. And then outside of that, you also have a USB connector, and you have your, your microphone. And it records to a 16 gigabyte card. You're going to get about 90 minutes of video. 
Now, 32 gigabyte cards, those are good, but of course, you think about price. A 32 gigabyte card is gonna cost a lot more than 16 gig. 16 gig is around $35. Your 32 gig, depending upon what quality, which, you, which one you decide to purchase, um, you're looking at probably like around $80 or $90. Now, if something were to go wrong with that card, that's a 16 gigabyte card, then you can go ahead and swap a fee out and you're still, you know, you're still ahead of the game. But with a 32 gigabyte card, if something happens to it, then you are down $90 and you need to purchase a new one. So my suggestion would be to use a 16 gigabyte card unless there's something that you are gonna be recording that's gonna be more than 90 minutes. Your stabilizer, which is very important because if I wanna adjust the stabilizer, if I'm doing a handheld shot, I wanna make sure it stabilizes the camera. But if I'm doing something that's on a tripod, well, I don't need a stabilizer because that's what the tripod is there for. A lot of people make the mistake of using a stabilizer when the camera is already in the tripod. So when, when you have that option to do so, and it's right there, if you see, okay, I made, made the mistake, I can go ahead and just press that button easily and get myself right back on track. Would I choose this camera? Hmm. Well, I would say this. If you're looking to purchase the HD camera, and you want to have features that will allow you to a little bit more flexibility than you would with your flip camera, obviously, or a little more features than you would have with your probably your $1,200 to $1,500 price range cameras, because a lot of them will just have a little focus, little knob at the bottom, or the focus won't be as precise. You know this camera is going to allow you a little bit more. As far as audio, it picks up good audio. Not the best in low light, but of course, if you're working low light, you want to make sure you provide lighting or if you really need to make sure that you're recording in a low light setting for a film then you want to go ahead and step up to a better camera this is not really good in low light but if you're shooting stuff outside if you're shooting stuff in a pretty well lit environment that's fine for wedding videography this is not something that I would necessarily say would be your best choice this is something that you may want to have as a second camera but I would not shoot a wedding with one of these because of course if you have a candlelit setting a lot of times in wedding environments you're not going to have really optimal lighting for video. You need to have a camera that has a chipset inside of it or it has a processor that's going to allow you to really capture really high quality pristine images. Now at the price point of $19.99 I think this is a really good deal. This is a good gateway camera to move into the area of working with professional cameras. If this is something where you're looking to get started professionally then I probably would suggest make a better investment, spend the $3,500, buy the JVC camera. This is something that is a good toy, it's something that's good to play with and to have fun and to learn about the different ways of videography, the different features, but I probably would say just hold off and purchase the new one. This is a good camera also at the same time to get for students. If you're an instructor and you're looking to purchase cameras for, for students to, to use inside of the classroom and perhaps you're working with Adobe Premiere or even Final Cut Pro is fine, this is a good camera to work with because it's inexpensive and of course at the same time you know with students they may bang up equipment or they're a little bit rougher with equipment than, than, um, than, than I would say being graduates are. But um, with this, this camera those are the kind of things you would keep in mind. Okay, I'd like to thank everyone for viewing this edition of Technologic Talk. My name is H.J. Dunmore. I thank you for taking out your time to view, spend time and learn about technology and listen to my views and opinions on these things. I would love to hear from you so please feel free to email, contact, me at technologictalk.vox.com and on there you'll find different articles and different links to different uh, resources involving technology. So until next time, thank you and take care.